Mary White is a world-renowned watercolorist of contemporary people. The recipient of countless awards, her works are in private, corporate, university, and public collections nationwide, and have been featured in numerous media outlets, including CBS Sunday Morning, PBS, and NPR. In 2019, Mary founded the Patriot Art Foundation as a means to inspire veterans to tell their stories through the arts. Well, welcome to the show, Mary. We're so glad that you could join us. I'm just excited because it's going to be a great show. And uh, you are our founder for the Patriot Art Foundation. So tell us a little bit about the history behind where you came up with the idea to create the Patriot Art Foundation. Well, hello, Tim. It's so good to see you and to be with you today on air. And um, I'm honored and uh, very excited to tell you about this whole project, the Patriot Art Foundation and what led up to it. It, it started uh, several years ago when I uh, first got an idea that I wanted to do this all-encompassing portrait of America. And I got this idea, um, what if I went to all 50 states and painted just one person from every state and you put them all together and you have this complete portrait of America that would show, represent everybody from all different walks of life and ages and backgrounds. And, and then I thought, oh my goodness, um, how could I possibly choose just one person? And, and then I thought, well, what makes a person most American and especially in a country as diverse as we are, what, you know, what does make a person most American? And that's when I realized it had to be a series about our veterans, because I believe they are our truest patriots. And I think that anybody that's willing to lay down their life potentially for our country, I mean, that it, they are our greatest Americans. And so that's what I did. The project took me, just the painting project took me seven years to do it. I went to all 50 states, met with all the veterans that I painted. I did it largely in secret. Uh, really, no one knew that I was working on this uh, series of paintings. And, and, then, and then the show went up. Um, you know, we kept it under wraps and then we launched it uh, in Charleston. And um, as we speak, it's on tour right now. It's, it's about to open at the Army Museum. And, um, and, but when it opened here in Charleston, and so many of the veterans came to see it, not just the, the veterans that were in the paintings, but veterans from all over wanted to see these paintings. Because I wanted anyone that walked in to see this exhibition to look at, look at any one of the paintings and say, that's me, and that they would feel included. But it's also what they said to me about how much they felt appreciated um, especially the Vietnam vets, you know, that they really felt appreciated for the first time and what these paintings meant to them and how proud they were um, to be in these paintings and, and especially how proud they were to be a veteran. And, and, and with talking to the veterans, I realized, you know, how important it was to have a cause greater than self. So that's when we decided uh, to, to launch the Patriot Art Foundation, because I thought, what if I could give this amazing gift of art to veterans as well, this ability to paint and express yourself? Because I know what it does for me, and other artists will tell you the same, that it's just, it's just so engaging, and it's, it's almost like uh, meditating, and, and how relaxing it can be. Well, maybe not all the time when it's not going so well, but most of the time it can be very relaxing. And I thought, well, I could do that for veterans, you know, give them a means of expression, a connection and purpose. And so that's how we launched the foundation. What's it like for you, you know, having not had a military background, when you're meeting all these different veterans, did you sense something like, was there a, like, was there a strand that connected all of us? No, yes. You know, um, I mean, there's so, there's, they were, what surprised me at first was how different they were, that, you know, that this is really a diverse country, that the different backgrounds and beliefs and ages and jobs and, and, you know, some live in the city or the country. And it's, I mean, they're just, 
uh, so different. But there was one continuing, that one little thread that connected all of them was this, this, this commitment to a cause greater than self that not only in the military, but I see them now, this great commitment, you know, after they've left the military to, to do something for, for other veterans. I mean, all of the veterans were, were, were paid for their time and we brought them to the opening and, and, you know, gave them a framed print of their painting and the book and everything. But there were many of them that the, the check that we gave them, they donated that to other veterans that they felt were probably could use the money more but so they still have this sense of commitment whether it's to their families or their communities and so that really moved me and you know when i got about halfway through this project and this is you know there are 50 states and this is you know an expense and sometimes i you know i wanted to you know if i wanted to find a fireman i couldn't find the fireman or the coal miner or you know i wanted to find a dairy farmer you might think that's easy but to find a dairy farmer who's also a veteran or a truck driver. I wanted to find a truck driver. That's a woman and a veteran. So I must have called 20 different, you know, um, uh, truck driving companies or to find a window washer calling window washing companies. But, you know, I got halfway through and I thought, oh, you know, I, I, I hope I can finish this project. And then I realized I now had a commitment to all these veterans that I had started no, I never finished the project. That's amazing. You know, and that's, you know, your criteria, it's narrowing down an already narrow field. You know, it's like how, like you had mentioned truck drivers that were also female and a veteran. Well, finding a female truck driver is rare enough. Now you got to find one that was a veteran. Oh my gosh. Now you're just like, it's, you know, it's such a narrow field. That must have been just stressful so you would call like companies did you call the vfw did you call like how did you find these people you know you know i my, my uh i made a lot of phone calls um did a lot of research I, one of my best sources were just small town municipalities the smaller the town the more they wanted to help me so i'd roll into the littlest town in idaho and say yeah i'm working on this project with veterans who do you have and they'd say i have ralph and sue and john and fred but if I called big companies or if I called, you know, VFWs, they were more reluctant, you know, because of HIPAA concerns and that type of things, privacy concerns. So, um, uh, I mean, just finding a coal miner, I'm not just to find a coal mine that was still operating, that they would talk to me. I mean, there were some organizations, you know, like if I wanted to go into a factory, they weren't so sure about this person coming in with a camera. Uh, you know, on a sketchbook, what's going on with that? So um, I had to talk my way into a lot of places. I mean, I didn't always know what I was going to get. I mean, I was, I knew that when I started out, I made a list of all the kinds of Americans I wanted to capture, everything from an astronaut all the way down to a homeless man, because we do have homeless veterans in in this country. And then everything in between, a teacher, a dairy farmer, a tattoo artist. And so some of them I targeted, but a couple of them I found just by chance, like in, 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 uh, you know, Idaho, you know, I found a falconer. I rolled into a small town. I say, who do you have? And they said, well, we've got, you know, this guy, he's a falconer. I went, wow, a falconer. That's, well, that's the thing. So, you know, I went out to see him and where he had, where he rehabbed and rescued and, and uh, like falcons and owls and hawks and eagles. And fantastic. But I, but I have to say, in the end, it was totally, completely the greatest adventure of my life, traveling the entire United States and meeting all these amazing, amazing veterans. Wow, there's nothing like painting outside. This is called en plein air painting, and there is nothing like it. Look at this landscape, and it's all around us. But there's a few key things you need to remember if you're gonna be painting outside. This is my travel easel, and you can see that it folds down, and it carries right into this great all-carry bag made by En Plein Air Pro. This is the palette I use, and you can see that it clips right onto 
the easel right here, the water goes right in, it's all ready to go. And it's even helpful that you can even tape your paper right down because sometimes it's windy and you don't want your paper flying around. But a couple key things to remember if you're gonna be painting outside. Make sure that your paper doesn't have direct sun on it because it can be very difficult to see your color. Also, wear a wide brim hat because it helps to cast shadow over your face so you're not squinting. It also can help frame the landscape because here's my brim right here. And also too, don't wear a bright color. Don't wear a bright red shirt because that can reflect right back into your paper here. So remember to keep everything with you. Make sure you have enough water. Make sure you have your brushes and extra paper for doing lots of paintings. So get out there and paint. There's nothing like it. That's so exciting. So let's take a look at some of this artwork. This one's going to just, everybody's going to love this one. Look at, look at that. Look at the smile. Look at the sparkle in those eyes. My gosh. Tell us about this. Well, well, well what you, what you can't tell um, from looking at this is, is the, the size of this. Now, these are all watercolors. And in, generally, um, if you haven't worked in watercolor before in watercolor, we generally don't use white paint. Um, so where you see, for instance, the highlight in, in the man's eyes, the white, the white part of his, you know, the sideburns or the, the top of his shirt, that's actually the white of the paper that I paint around. Mm. What you also can't really tell by looking at this, this is a big painting. This is over six feet across. That's um, amazing I, to me. That, and that's and look amazing. It really big so mm. that, you know, that they have a lot of impact. Because, you know, museum walls are, are big. And so you want this to really read from across the room. This is, this is Hank. Hank served in uh, World War II, Coast Guard. We unfortunately lost Hank uh, about a year ago. Uh, and when I went to see him at his home in New Jersey, I knew that he uh, grew, had quite a, a wonderful vegetable garden behind his home. And, uh, and, but when I went to see him, I thought, I'm going to maybe do a painting of him sort of hunched over in the garden hoeing. But when I got there, he's, he's this exuberance. He would just come right up to you know, a foot from my face. Hey, Mary, Mary, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> and uh, so I thought, that's how I'm going to paint Hank, you know, with the, the dappled light coming through uh, this beat up old hat that he was wearing. Mm, it, it's so fun. You could ju it's just pouring personality. You know, you can just see it. He's a mischievous, mischievous man. Yes, he he's is. Nothing but fun. And he's probably got some really great jokes. And, you know, just one of those veterans that's got a million stories. And most of them are probably true, maybe. And they're not lies. They're spices in his story. And I can just, I, I, we all know someone like this. And what, what, you what? You know what, um, too, about Hank, that um, every veteran that I met with, I asked them, what was the best thing and what was the worst thing about being in the military? What was the best and what was the worst? And, and, um, and you can imagine for some of them, you know, the worst, you can imagine, you know, um, being in combat and losing friends and being away from home. And that was hard for a lot of the veterans. But when I asked him what was the worst, he said, well, nothing. He loved the whole thing. I mean, he just loved the, the travel, the camaraderie. He said the best of all was, was weekends when they would take the train down to Baltimore to go dancing. So he said that was, that was the best for him. That's, you know, and that's true. You know, we, we all have different experiences. My military experience was so, you know, I never saw combat, even though I served during the first Gulf War, I was in basic training for most of it. And then when I got out, I went straight to Panama City Beach, Florida. And that tells you everything you need to know about how hard my military career was, you know, and the Gulf War was over. It was done. I didn't, you know, so it's like my career was a breeze cakewalk. And some people, you know, they were over there and, and they have, you know, traumatic, traumatic things in their lives that they have to deal with. So everybody's got it differently, but you definitely captured personality there. So from that spectrum, we're going to go to this next painting here. Tell us about this guy right here. Oh, um, this is Dennis. And uh, people often ask me what was, you know, maybe the most difficult painting to do. And I would have to say it's this one. Mm -hmm. uh, Dennis uh, 
was homeless uh, for almost all of his adult life. And I met him um, out in California. He lives near Monterey. And to get access to him, you know, I, there's an organization out there that helps um, reintegrate homeless veterans. And so they told me about Dennis, who lived up in the forest outside of, uh, outside of uh, Carmel, Monterey area. And so I actually hired another uh, homeless veteran uh, and his girlfriend to take me up into the woods uh, to guide me to, to Dennis, where I was told that he lived under a tarp with his dog. So I carried, you know, on the trail going up, you know, my, my backpack, which had my camera and sketching gear in it. And I also hand carried a, a big bag of dog food. I did this painting over three times because I, I just didn't quite get the feeling of, of PTSD, tra trauma, um, homelessness, this, you know, the, the rougher part of, of what it means to be a veteran for many. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, you know, it's like, how do you, how do you portray that kind of, of homelessness and still give the person dignity in the painting? So you can see that in this one, um, a lot of, you know, the background is white and it's, it, and I've just uh, streaked across it with these brush strokes that signify, you know, tree branches, but it also could uh, signify, you know, perhaps, you know, gunfire going by and then that mm. splatter of red as he's just sort of slowly bending over there. Mm. Yeah, this is a very, very powerful image, you know, and, and there are so many veterans that struggle so greatly when they, when they get home and that, that transition, you know, that's a big thing that a lot of, a lot of military personnel, we don't like to talk about is the transition back to the civilian world. And, you know, the, the, we found that the, the foundation has been helpful this way, because for instance, uh, some of the veterans that have been, you know, had to do that kind of transition one of them, a woman told me that when she got out of the service, she couldn't talk. And it wasn't until that she learned how to paint that she could, she found her voice again and could talk. Oh, wow. That, that, that's incredible. That's incredible. Well, you brought up, you brought up a, um, a female in the military. Let's go ahead and show a painting of one of our ladies that has served. Here's another one. Oh, this one's so great. Look at that. Tell us this about is, this. Yeah, this is also a, a, a large painting. It's a, it's a good six feet across, framed so up. So practically life size, bigger than yes. life size. And of course, I had to include women. We've, we've got um, a, a good percentage of women in the military now. Absolutely. And I knew that I also had to include a Native American because we also have many Native Americans that uh, serve in the military. And so this one, this is Kella from South Dakota. She's a traditional dancer. And I asked her, you know, if she would put on her regalia for me. I wanted to paint her in that. And when she put it on, there was such purity about this. You know, I thought, oh, my goodness, how can I show that? You know, and, and one option, well, you could show her by putting her, you know, in a, a field of daisies under a blue sky. But I think sometimes it's better to put something against its opposite. So you mm. can see here, I put her in an alleyway with graffiti, with trash around her, and then this kind of this, this uh, gaze upward here uh, that she has. And so she told me that um, her, that wonderful beaded vest that she's wearing, that you can see that if you look closely, you can see the, there's little American flags on it, eagles mm -hmm. come down the arm here. Uh, she hocked her engagement ring to oh. have that made. And wow. the, 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 the boots that she has on, the slippers, um, I believe her husband made those too. He's Native American, as well as some of the jewelry. This is the painting that took me the, lo the longest to do because of all those beads. You know, each bead is like painting a, you know, a, a small uh, cylinder. And mm -hmm. so it has a light side, a middle tone and a dark side and a shadow so it's light middle tone dark shadow light middle tone dark shadow mm. you know over and over and over again so this is the painting that took me the longest to do i can imagine those beads you know that you need you, you need you need therapy after that you know or both mental therapy as well as you need you need a massage that is some work
I'm Mary White, and if you're a veteran interested in telling your story through art, come join us at the Patriot Art Foundation, where we will help give you a means of purpose, connection, and expression through art. So come join us today. Speaking of gigantic paintings, let's look at this next one because it is actually, it's a triptych and it's really cool. Now we went from, from um, the gambit here, but this is, I guess you could say, you know, from, from we're going from, from the lowest of lows of how veterans live their lives. Now we're literally going to the highest of high because we're going into outer space. So let's take a look at this painting right here of an astronaut. Okay, so what, what, what you're seeing there on the screen is, is, you know, the bottom portion where you see the astronaut up close, and then you can see the triptych across the top. And of course, triptych means three paintings. Um, this is uh, actually framed out, and you can't see the frame in this. The frame is spectacular. Framed out, it's 10 feet across. Wow. And the frame maker, all of, by the way, all of these frames are made by hand. They're all hand carved, hand gilded. And uh, this one, I asked the frame maker, could you make the frame slightly concave so you'd feel like you're in the space shuttle looking out the window? Oh, wow. This is, this is uh, Winston Scott. He's from Florida. Uh, he actually did three spacewalks. And uh, so I got, uh, managed to get into NASA uh, and was able to, to go into sort of the, the back rooms of NASA to see where you know, these guys meet and to talk to him. Uh, about what it, it what it was like being you know doing three spacewalks and what I loved about him he, I asked him I said geez Winston weren't you ever scared and he he said Mary we had a job to do we were too well trained to be scared and that's what I loved uh, I, you know, I heard this a lot from our the veterans I mean they you know, it's just working over the fear. And that's one of the things they taught me that, yeah, you can, you can be scared at times, but you just do it scared. And you just, and if you're well, if you're trained enough, you can, you can get past that. Do these paintings. I worked from four sources. I worked from life when I could. I, I worked from photographs. I worked from memory and I worked from imagination. Now, obviously I wasn't there to paint him like this, you know, because he'd be like floating around. I, because I actually asked him if he would put on the spacesuit for me to pose for me. And he said, Mary, that would literally take an act of Congress because the, the, the spacesuits are so, you know, guarded. Um, right. And I think, of course, and protected too. So, but they did have at NASA uh, a couple of them on display. And so I was able to photograph those and then to just to do research, you know, what, what did would it look like if he was out there? So this, I had to rely on what he told me about what he saw and some photographs in my imagination. So I did a lot, now this is an exemption, I did a lot of this face down because I had to put these three large sheets of paper on the floor and then using a large brush about, you know, a good couple inches wide, painted in that background, that dark background that you see there. Mm. I painted that left to right, all at one go, painting around, the figure uh, all in one go. And then just um, to get that sort of feeling of the constellation, painting around that really quickly. I think I might have even sprinkled in a little bit of salt, which, uh, which also sort of uh, pulls the pigment away and helps give you those little sparkles. Uh, but that had to be sort of crab crawling on the, on the floor around it and then put it up uh, vertically so I could finish the painting. How did that turn into the Patriot Art Foundation? We, we wanted to be able to reach out to veterans and to be able to offer them the experience, this wonderful experience of being able to express themselves um, and to be able to connect each other and to give them this sense of purpose. So we, we are, uh, are actually uh, doing several things now. Uh, the, one of the things we're doing is we're working with area uh, VAs around the country, I've seen a big difference in, in watching them, you know, in the beginning of the class to the end of the class, how this kind of sense of uh, this uh, self-esteem. And I remember asking one of the women who had, had taken the class, I said, what, what was it like? You know, what did you get out of it? And she said, you know, art gives me something to feel proud about. And I thought, my goodness, what better thing 
anything can we give anybody, but to give them this sense of pride in something they've, the, who they are or something that they've created. So we, we're working with the VAs and we're also um, uh, uh, launching, and, and I'm sure by the time this comes out, this will be launched, that um, we're doing a, a series of online classes. It's called Watercolor Boot Camp. It's through an international art company called Terracotta. And uh, we're offering veterans this, this course this, uh, of how to paint in watercolor. We're showing them how to paint a still life, you know, uh, an animal, flowers, to do, um, make these wonderful watercolor journal notebooks. And so it's, it's really an exciting course. And I'm so excited to be able to bring this to veterans and to see what we can do with them. The foundation really does touch veterans. In, in some great ways. And for me, it's a pleasure to be a part because I love to teach. Yes. But these are my people. Yes. And so I, I get really excited about it. And to know that we're touching so many veterans and we have so many great plans for the future to touch even more veterans, yes. it's exciting to be a part. So, yes. You know, and every time I do have an interaction with a veteran with their art, I walk away and I say, I am so glad I did that. You know, it's just so rewarding for us to be involved with the veterans. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Mary. This has been fabulous. Uh, I'm so glad that we had we had to have you on the show because you're the founder. So we got to have you on the show. Well, thank, thank you. you. It's a great, great pleasure and a great honor. Thank you. Oh well, thank you very much. So now we're gonna we're gonna end this interview and we're gonna dive into to, to some more things to show everybody else what's going on at the Patriot Art Foundation. So again, Mary. Thank you very much for joining us. Welcome veterans to Watercolor Boot Camp, where we are gonna show you how you can tell your own story through art. I'm Mary White. I spent seven years traveling the country, painting veterans from all walks of life and from every state for the project, We the People, Portraits of Veterans in America. And that's where I learned how painting could be a way for you too, as a veteran, to tell your own story. We're going to show you how you can select your painting materials, draw it on the paper, mix the color, paint washes, and create paintings that you'll be proud enough to show your family. I was a combat medic. Army. I hadn't painted in 55 years since the fourth grade. I tried watercoloring once, it didn't work out very well. Not as hard as I thought it was. And so what will your paintings look like? Well, they won't look like mine, and they won't look like anybody else's because there's no one way to paint. There's not a right way or a wrong way. Your paintings will look just like your own because maybe you like to paint every little detail or maybe you like to paint big, loose washes and paintings that are almost abstract. You might like bright, vibrant color or you may prefer neutral colors. Uh, I'm learning and watching Mary, now she just throws paint on the canvas and all of a sudden it's that's a pair it. of boots. Amazing. It sounds weird, but you lose track of time. And that's when you know you're doing something that's good for you. You'll be painting and all of a sudden you look around and it's like, man, it's been two hours. Oh, this is amazing. This is what I've been doing with my life, painting. We're gonna come alongside you so that you can work at your own pace in your own home. And we're gonna show you how to paint big, loose paintings, still life, landscapes, flowers, animals, portraits, and even illustrated journals that you'll be proud to have as a keepsake. It saved me. I had a really deep spot and it was the art therapy that it pulled me out. I get stressed, that's the first thing I go to. The problem still exists, but it doesn't affect me anymore. We are so proud at the Patriot Art Foundation to partner with Terracotta to bring you these courses. And so now, let's get started.